We killed deer in South Dakota, Iowa, and in between that somewhere is Minnesota, and we want to spend some time there in the future. So we're looking at maps for all things Minnesota today. And if you're going to do some map scouting and need you some onyx, check that out down there. That's right. So Minnesota is known as a big deer hunting culture, right? It's a big state. There's big deer that come from there. And so with the agriculture, a lot of the big public land and all that, there's a lot of opportunity for hunters in that state. So today we're looking at Minnesota, the season starts in the middle of September most years and looks like it runs until the end of the year. Yeah, so you're gonna be able to archery hunt for pretty much the three and a half months and then there's also some muzzleloader seasons in there as well as firearms. And it seems that in Minnesota you can kill two deer uh, I'm assuming both of those can be bucks, but they're pretty strict on that two deer rule. There may be some other antlerless tags available as well. Something for you to check out on the DNR website. Yeah, comment below if you know how you can kill more than two deer in Minnesota, because we don't. <laughs> um, there's also a couple of notable qualities that we're going to go through right here. First thing I'm going to look at is there are wolves, which is kind of interesting. Ooh. Wolves and whitetails don't always overlap in their ranges. So something to think about there, you may have wolf kill. And then also, if you're just kind of weird about that stuff, you may not mm -hmm. want to hunt in wolf country. That's uh, pretty a big reason why they don't overlap I think that they don't get along very well that's right so another thing you have to consider in Minnesota is the CWD issue they've had a lot of CWD cases in the state especially in the southern portion so uh, there's gonna be some regulations about how much you can transport deer what you can do with them processing wise and then also they have had some population reduction type seasons in the southern part of the state as well they're pretty controversial you might be going to a place that looks really good on the map but you show up and there's no deer because they went in there and wiped them out intentionally so that's something you need to be aware of yeah there's also an interesting population dynamic thing that we can talk about right here as well because at some point in the history Minnesota has been a high number of Booners, Boone and Crockett mm. deer uh, state. It's been, you know, it's produced big, big deer, right? There's some of the best counties in the entire world for whitetail, big Boone and Crockett whitetail deer. There are a lot of things that come into play as to like how many of those numbers are recent and this and that. So we're looking at a couple different variables here, right? You could look at the fact that uh, maybe ag was uh, not as, as prominent back in the days when you were seeing higher numbers, maybe it was, and then also with CWD taking out some of that population that ag kind of creates and that, you know, that population overlap or saturation, maybe there's a, a chance in the future with CWD taking more of those animals out and some of these CWD hunts taking more animals out for deer to grow bigger because they get more of what they need in resources. Mm -hmm. So speaking of ag, the state's really divided kind of like three three-fifths of really heavy agriculture and then the kind of the more northern two-fifths of the state is just straight big timber marsh country so really two completely different hunts and different hunting styles that you're going to encounter within the state yeah another predator issue would be bears maybe that could be mm -hmm. something that hurts the, the population as well also if you're weird about hunting in bear populations <laughs> then they are there but mm -hmm. there is an opportunity there if you like the potential of hunting bears in the fall there is a yeah. season it looks like there's a lot of public land in minnesota there's a couple different types there's state forest, there's national forest, there are lots of WMAs, of course. And then also there are these things called tax assessed land. So pretty much it's just like back tax property that the state or county, I guess, acquires. And I believe those are public access, but you need to check on that to make sure, uh, just so you know, you're not stomping around on somebody's property. Yeah. There are also, what's the saying? There's the land of 10 trillion lakes or something? Yeah, land of oh, 10,000 lakes. No, that's actually our debt every day. Right? That's right. 10 trillion. That's what we call trillion. it. Okay. Year. But yeah. it's, it's got a lot of water access or potential water access so something to think about there for access purposes and then also if uh, that water inhibits access that could be a way to get to a population of deer that has not been hunted much with all this said we don't actually make the rules we're not game wardens so you should call a game warden or their the local dnr up there in minnesota so that's uh, the best way to know the regulations how many deer you can kill what your access looks like if you can hunt tax properties all this and that this is just what we have researched so far we have not called anybody so make sure you do that before you go we like to talk about pre-rut rut and post-rut when we're map scouting right because those are kind of three different environments that deer are in in the fall especially in minnesota starting 9 17 you really don't have any rut activity at all it's just deer doing deer stuff which is actually pretty exciting in a temperate climate like this and then the more ruddy and then post-rut stuff so we're going to start out talking about uh, maybe some places that would look pretty good in the pre-rut. If you were to look at the Boone and Crockett map for the state of Minnesota, it's going to tell you that a lot of Booners came from this northeastern portion up here, kind of like that uh, North Shore boundary water stuff. I would say don't go there. Even though there's been some big deer there, 
that's not really really modern statistics okay my eyes are drawn to southern minnesota a uh, couple big reasons here, all right? This is Iowa on the southern side of the border here, which everybody knows that is a good place to deer hunt because they manage well uh, and there's giant bucks there. Uh, another reason is there's a ton of agriculture in southern Minnesota and you have these big river systems coming through, good genetics and good nutrition. Yeah, so you know, generally when I'm looking at this stuff, I'm kind of in the same boat. Um, and I'm thinking about a couple of things in regards to this. So we're just going to take and like divide Minnesota into like north versus south, right? Not to make a civil war out of things, but <laughs> blue in the gray. We're gonna we're gonna look at the south side as being the agriculture side, and typically what I'm looking for in those areas are anything that's untillable. And um, I think if you can find, not that you necessarily need it, but if you can find trees, then you're doing well. There's a lot mm -hmm. of marsh habitat, and then. Uh, on the north, in the north country, and you get this in the south and in the west side too because you get kind of this pothole region kind of thing going on with the marshes, you're going to have water being a uh, general guideline for deer movement throughout a, a place. So those are two things to think about, in my opinion, when you're looking at all this stuff. Yeah. I spent a lot of time up here in the north section of Minnesota and actually struggled to find something I really love. And I think um, if I was going to go hunt here, I could do it. I just in preparation for this thought man it's just so much easier to show some good examples down here in the south mm -hmm. i have a couple a little bit further up but the south stuff but far and away if you're trying to kill a big old buck i think is the place to be um so minnesota has that season that's from mid-september through the end of december so you really do have really three phases or uh, drew's might tell you a lot more than that but yeah pre-rut rut and post-rut mm -hmm. right um and that's something that we want to talk about a little bit let's start with pre-rut thinking about like a spot that would work really good with pre-rut um i know that i marked a place um i believe right here this is actually central minnesota uh we talked about this a while ago but like um Marsh bedding islands, oak islands, are gonna be a pretty big deal if you wanna hunt that pre-rut type stuff. And you can look at this place here. Um, get that out of the way. There are a lot of deer trails coming from these larger wooded areas right here through this marsh. You can see a good trail there, a good trail coming out. Look at all these trails coming to this island right mm -hmm. here, dude. Like that's, that's hammer time right mm -hmm. there, okay? Now one of the things you do need to be aware of is that that is not a trail, mm -hmm. okay? Those are beaver trails is what those are. So you need to understand that like deer trails are gonna be fairly straight lines like this, and they're gonna go from timber to timber just like this is. So I think that's a really good example of something to hunt early season in Minnesota or pre-rut in Minnesota. Yeah, so another thing I'm thinking early season is ag, right? As you can see, my map just lit up with the crop Woo, layer on Onyx that, here. Golly. I mean, that is just the, the patchwork of corn and beans, right? And I think corn um, is, is good pre-rut stuff, as good as it is as beans are in a lot of cases, you know, especially if you're talking about like October stuff. Um, so when I look at this and pre-rut uh sense here is you've got this this uh, this road that's not too far away right this is a pretty good haul right here but it's not too far away um so in the pre-rut you have a chance of killing deer before they've actually been hunted much right so even with this proximity to the road here i think you can spend some time coming across here if you you may you may be able to cut across that in waders i don't know but if you can find a way and whether that's a boat you know, putting in a boat here and getting to here or whatever to get to this back corner. I really like it. Basically, what you get in the, in the pre-rut a lot of times is these deer that uh, have a very habitual lifestyle day in and day mm -hmm. out. And these deer can just live. I mean, this is this is like tall grass uh, and reeds and, you know, cattails or whatever. This looks like cattails to me. And so you've got these tall, this is bedding. You know, this is all bedding, right? This is a CRP grass and you can see the trails, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is obviously deer living in this stuff, living in these trees right here, living in this, and coming into this this corn right here. You know, that's just, it's so easy. Like yeah, these deer are just getting trails. fat, and these are good trails in the corner of this thing. You've got a tree to hang in here, right? You could even, uh, if you got, I don't know what the, our pre predominant winds down here are like a southeast that time of year. That would work pretty well on a southeast in the evenings, but I think that you're gonna have a better access in the mornings because mm -hmm. you're gonna have deer out in these fields feeding at night that are working back into here. So in that case, you know, you get you a cold front in mid to late October blowing a north wind, 
that could be really a cool spot. Yeah, man, that, that is a good idea, and I like that spot a lot. I also like that it's kind of small and kind of off by itself. Off the grid. Which uh, definitely lends itself. Some of the things that, that we think about in the rut are pretty generic, right? Mm -hmm. Funnels, and that can be created by uh, agriculture, or it can be created by waterways and that kind of thing. Uh, this is classic Midwest rut, right? So from November 1st through the 14th or 15th, it's gonna be a rage fest. And one thing I like about the rut in the Midwest is that bucks do this thing where they try to take a doe out into a random place and stay with her for a number of hours to breed her, okay? So I like this place here for a number of reasons in the rut. For one thing, it's on the Iowa border, okay? Mm. So it's probably pretty good, uh, next to a fishing game club, no less. Mm. Um, but uh, there's good trails right here that you can see on Onyx, which is really nice. But this is a huge CRP field, okay? And you take that and pair it with some pretty good timber and then some beans right here, soybeans right next to it. Uh, our friend Jared Mills at Midwest Whitetail, he says he'll hunt beans any time of the year. Once they go from green to brown, they then become a grain and the deer go out there and hammer them. So you got food, cover, water, everything you need right here. This is a super tall CRP field. I would love to come in here, set up in one of these trees, kind of an observation type sit, maybe even bring a decoy to set up mm -hmm. right in here near that tall CRP and just watch, observe, hit the antlers together and shoot a big old buck. Man, that's cool, I like that dude. The decoy idea is cool. Uh, for the rut, I look at this spot being pretty cool, and I'm, mm. I don't know if you can hunt this, it's state forest, who knows, you know, up yeah. there, you never Check know. Check it out, it uh, is public land. <laughs> right, yeah, it says it's public land here. So, assuming that it is huntable, um, I like this because it's a pretty good haul, you know, if you go up here and use the line distance uh, tool, so you, you know, if you were just draw a straight line there, we're looking at 1.2. So you're getting back in there. That's a, ways. That's, a, that's a that's a haul, and this is a lot of elevation, right? So you may, you know, you may could come in here, who knows, and stay in the bottom or whatever. But essentially, I like to think of this spot this as potentially another really good morning spot. You've got all this ag that sits up on top, all the way around this big creek system, right? This big draw that comes down into here. So what you're going to have in the morning before uh, before the sun really starts to beam down on the landscape you're going to get a falling thermal overall probably so you're going to get this wind sucking back this way you can enter from right here you got the wind in your face the whole time and i really like this bowl right here mm. as being a place where deer will come down and congregate and sit and wait until they want to go somewhere else potentially mm -hmm. but you got you got a you know deer feeding off of here off of this ridge there off of this and there's a bunch of corn back in here and back in here that they can feed to and i think just overall generally if you can get in there and get the wind right for yourself mm -hmm. um and it's got this creek system too right and then we talk about that all the time oh you yeah know, we had many scouting videos um if you haven't watched them yet that talk about creeks being a highway for deer mm -hmm. well, what is the rut it's a it's a time when deer are on the highway traveling right, <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> so it's like thanksgiving you know yeah I mean? friday nights in a small town the boys are running up and down the road that's, that's right. how it goes yeah. okay another thing to think about too just a little bit here for rut stuff we were picking stuff out in the middle of nowhere well look this is one of the larger metropolitan areas in the country minneapolis st paul twin cities i mean this is 10 minutes out of town good looking spot right here with some ag on the north and look what i found right here there are trails coming out of this island going out mm. across here right there so uh this isn't like a thing you if you do live in the twin cities like you can find a pretty good spot to hunt with a lot of deer not far from home i mean you know it'd be really cool if you say uh you're the kind of guy who uh you know, gets to hunt weekends, but if you get off early one day, you can just zip out there and hunt a rut on November 4th and kill yeah. a giant. Or if you're on a work trip in the middle of November and you're like, um, I'm going to be in Minneapolis for a few days. Yeah, <laughs> Spend it ain't the too hard to hunting. fly with a bull. No, man. No. So uh, now we, we start to think about post rut after mm -hmm. this, right? A couple things that we think is obviously ag and KC Mitchell mentioned thermal cover as mm -hmm. well, which I think is very important because this is way up north, right? Yeah, We're talking buddy. about cold, cold weather. So uh, as far as post post-rut goes you got any thoughts about that i made myself go real far north <laughs> oh i tried so hard man. uh it's hard to go across this state and i'm still going to stay away from the northeast because this is tough this is hard hard it's flat it's marsh if you can go up there and kill a deer that's awesome send me a message about it because i want to hear about it and actually a pen, a pen too. my yeah yep. pen. my great granddad is from ely and i've spent quite a bit of time up there in the boundary waters and i'd like to go kill a deer there one day it's just not something that seems easy but up here in the far northwest part of Minnesota, there is almost in Canada uh, a really good looking spot. And I think it would be pretty cool 
because there is crop here, wheat, which usually means there's going to be some green in the wintertime, mm -hmm. and a sort of south-facing slope. This doesn't have a lot of terrain, but you can tell that it flattens out down here towards the ag. And if nothing else, it's thick, thick timber, maybe even some evergreens right there. And if you zoom in here close, there mm -hmm. is a deer trail or two right into the corner, huh? leading into the corner of that field. And you've talked about the corner of fields being a big deal in the mm -hmm. past. But I look at that and uh, think, you know what? It makes a lot of sense, you know, in the deep depths of winter to hunt something like that. When it's super cold, mm -hmm. these deer are going to want to get up and move around. Actually, kind of early in the day, it's a thing that happens whenever it's real cold. The deer want to move, and they're going to go out here to these high-carbohydrate food sources, corn, soybeans, wheat, it's not really high carb, but it's gonna be a winter food source. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like that for late season. Really. Yeah, I really do like that, man. The the thermal cover is spot on there. You know, mm -hmm. another thing that I think of post season, especially in a state that's he got a heavy number of deer hunters in it, is just uh, remoteness mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, something that is exclusive and doesn't have a whole lot of pressure in it. That's hard to get to, right? This place is not necessarily a straight line too far from an entrance right here, as you see. But you have to cross a pretty big, let's see, it's called the Whitewater River Middle Fork. Yeah. So if yeah. you had your little inflatable boat or something. Those lines are close together, too. This is this is steep right here. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're taking out a lot of the people, right? And so you got this horseshoe bend right here, uh, or oxbow as we call them down here a lot of times, that potentially is a huge bedding area that is literally landlocked from anybody hunting it you know other than this private landowner right here potentially it being easy it you know being easy access at least so if you're willing to work for it it's not that hard you carry in like a little inflatable two-man and take it down the hill right here blow it up with a pump and cross over um, you know, honestly, another morning spot, potentially. I know I've given only morning spots, but this is cool <laughs> because you got deer feeding out here and all this ag all out in here. And then and you've got stuff that will sustain them through the winter, being, mm -hmm. you know, corn and soybeans and that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, and potentially this is a preseason spot too, because look, you got alfalfa right there mm -hmm. and you've got bedding right here in a great place where they feel safe. They got a deep river behind them and probably never see any pressure mm -hmm. from anything, coyotes, wolves, nothing from back in here hardly. Yeah. So kind of like that as maybe a late season post rut. Yeah, spot. I really like that spot, man. I uh, hope that helps y'all. If you're thinking about doing a little map scouting, remember these tips and remember this is your element. Live in it.